In America, we have a word for a politician who has lots of integrity and who would never think of lying to the voters during a campaign. And that word is loser. Mo Lewis 57 Political Vlogs. The name you can trust. Hey there. I like to take a break from partisan politics and talk about something that I think we all can agree on. I like to talk about a particular group of people, and these are people that you may know. These are people who never vote purely on party line. These are people that watch all the debates and watch the conventions and watch all the political ads. These are people that really take the time to size up each candidate based on their individual qualities and make their vote based on that. You know, morons. Well, okay, maybe that's a little bit harsh. Maybe they're not all morons, but most of them are, as this simple little chart will show. Okay, this simple little handmade chart represents the political spectrum in the United States of America. The further to the left you go, the more liberal you get, and the further to the right you go, the more conservative you get. And I'm making this to kind of illustrate, you know, the problems you have when you try to vote for someone based on your impressions of their personal qualities or how honest you think they are, how much integrity you think they are. First of all, as I stated in the beginning, there is no such thing as a successful and honest politician. You can't make it far in politics if you're honest, especially on the presidential level. I mean, just think about the Iowa caucuses. Iowa is a huge corn state, and corn is used to make ethanol. And everyone who studied the issue knows that the whole ethanol thing is a complete crock. I mean, it takes more than a gallon of gas when you add everything up to make a gallon of ethanol. It doesn't help at all to use ethanol. But, you know, all these politicians go to Iowa and say, oh, ethanol is great, corn is great, because they want to win the Iowa caucus because it's the first contest of the primary. So they all lie. So that's the first thing. Can't trust any politician at all. <clears throat> I mean, they're all kind of scandals to a certain extent. However, here's the thing. The parties right now are extremely polarized. As you can see, you know, there is no overlap here. You know, you have the, Dem you have the Republicans here, the Democrats here. You know, the most um, moderate, you know, uh, Republican is nowhere close to the most moderate Democrat. Now, 30 years ago, that was different. There probably was quite a bit of overlap about 30 years ago, but... The parties have way, have moved way, way apart. Things are very partisan. And really, they're in their own little box right now. And <clears throat> a given Democrat or Republican is going to tell you lies, isn't going to tell you the truth. And when they're, you know, when they're um, doing the primaries, they're going to try to seem, you know, more the one side. Like a Democrat will try to seem more liberal during the primaries. During the primaries, a GOP guy will try to seem much more conservative. And during the general election, they'll say things which will make them seem like they're more towards the middle. And in truth, you never really know where they really are. But what you do know is that they're in, they're in these boxes. They really are going to be in these boxes. The party is going to hold them to that. If they get in office, they want to stay in power, they want to get reelected, they're going to have to stay in those boxes. And those boxes aren't anywhere close to each other. I mean, you know, as I said, the most moderate Democrat and the most moderate Republican, they hold positions which are miles and miles apart. And yes, there probably are some voters that truly, truly are right in the middle of the political spectrum. Fine. Those people want to, you know, um, gauge the personal characteristics of each candidate and make their vote based on that. Fine. Maybe that makes sense. But if most people really think about it and really look at each issue by issue, they're going to realize that they're somewhere along this political spectrum. They're not very close to the middle. And if that's the case... The personal qualities of the candidate don't matter. If you want to get done what you want to get done in government, you have to vote for the party that you're closer to. You have to. It, for example, let's take, let's, take, let's take a good example here. Um, Bill Clinton. Everyone knows Bill Clinton isn't the most honest guy in the world. And when he was running for president back in 1992, he said that he was going to end the restrictions upon gays in the military. He was going to open up gays to be in the military. So he campaigned... Let me get this so you can see this. He said he was way over here on the political spectrum. That's what he said. Turned out, once he got into office, he buckled and did the whole silly don't ask, don't tell thing, which is kind of around here, maybe even around here. But the point is, if you believe in gay rights, if that's something you believed in, you're still much better off voting for Clinton because if you voted for Republican, the policy was going to be over here. So yeah, Clinton's a liar. Yeah, he, he fudges stuff. He's slick willy, but... 
you still have a good idea what you're going to get when you vote for a Democrat, and you have a good idea what you're going to get when you vote for a Republican. For example, um, as I said, honesty and integrity doesn't matter to me. Back in 2004, I told everyone I knew that I actually believed that George W. Bush was much, much more honest than John Kerry. John Kerry, yes, he's a flip-flopper. You, you didn't know where he was going to stand or what he was going to do. But he was going to be somewhere over here. No matter what he said, he'll, he'll be somewhere in that part of the political spectrum. George Bush, he told you he would be right over here. He said, I'm going to be right over here. I'm going to be very conservative. And by golly, that's what he was. And I knew that. And I said, I'd rather take John Kerry's lies than George Bush's truth. Because I know wherever Kerry really stands is going to be closer to what I believe in. And... That's, that's really how it is. You just have to vote upon what you believe in. Vote for the party that you believe in. Don't vote on the individual, you know, qualities of the candidate. You know, it's silly. The, the, the candidates in the presidential election was never that close ideologically. They're just not. And yet, yeah, maybe if you're right in the middle, fine. Weigh the people, you know, you know, decide which one you like better based on personal qualities. But otherwise... You should, you should have made your decision already, okay? And like, I'm just going to say one more thing. So I know some people are going to say, oh, what, what John McCain is different. He's a maverick. He goes against his own party. That's what he wants you to believe now. And I'll be honest. Eight years ago, I might have believed that because I remember distinctly eight years ago when, when you know, they had the primary against George W. Bush and George W. Bush was talking about his big tax cuts he wanted and I was watching a debate and McCain said, that's a terrible idea. You know, you're going to burden future generations with debt. You're going to create a huge deficit. It's, it's going to be disastrous. You can't do that. And George Bush said something to the effect of, it's the people's money. They deserve to keep it. And, oh, huge applause. And that more than anything else, even more than all this stuff in South Carolina, doomed John McCain's campaign. Because um, if you're in a Republican primary and you say you're not for huge tax, tax cuts, it's over. You're not winning. And when George Bush got in office, John McCain still fought against those tax cuts. He was against them. He was against them. He voted against them. And then it got close to the 2008 primary. And McCain said, probably said, I'm 72 years old. This is probably my last chance. Do I want to throw away the presidency like I did? Because believe me, in 2000, if he had been for tax cuts, if he had said that in the primaries back then, he would have beat George W. Bush and Al Gore, and he'd be finishing off eight years as president. So he gave up the presidency by making a, a principled decision to speak the truth back in 2000. I give him credit for that. However, that's not the case anymore. He's decided, I need to be president. I'll just say anything I can to be president. And yes, if he gets elected, maybe the old maverick John McCain will, will come back. Maybe he will do sensible things and not listen to the Republican orthodoxy. Maybe. But even at 72, I think he probably wants to get reelected. He doesn't want to be branded a liar, so he'll probably follow through and do what he says he's going to do in this election, which is, you know, keep the Bush tax cuts and do lots of other really conservative things that he hadn't, um, you know, uh, believed in before. Um, so, yeah, he's, that's almost an advantage for him. People think, oh, he might do the moderate thing. I don't think he will, um, but whatever. That's not the point. I don't want to get too partisan here. My point is... Don't vote just on how much you like the person. Vote on the issues. That's the point I'm trying to make. And um, once again, um, I don't ask this very often, but if you're watching this and you agree with me and you think other people would agree, please forward this this message. I would like this message to get out to at least some people, you know, because once again, we've got a big election. It's coming up now. we all got to get ready for it. So, hey, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.